Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. There's been a brand new update to the OpenXR Toolkit. Today we're going to walk through all the new features coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So before we get started in today's video, I thought we would go over what we are and are not going to be covering. What we are not going to be covering is the download and installation process for the OpenXR Toolkit. We have done that so many times in the past. So if you are new to the OpenXR Toolkit, I will post a link down below in the description. I highly recommend to check that video out first and then come back to this one. I'll also post a link up here in the top right. You can click on that as well. What we will be going over today is Microsoft Flight Sim config file settings. Now, I know you're gonna say, wait a minute, that's not the OpenXR Toolkit, but it is very important that we go in and change all the post process settings inside of the config file because we now have the ability to manipulate all of those ourselves inside of the OpenXR Toolkit. Next, we are gonna go through all the different post process settings that we can adjust, and I'll share my personal settings with you as well, and it may give you a good starting point. And if you enjoy the content today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Oh, and by the way, we are using the version 1.1.2 of the OpenXR Toolkit. If yours does not say this in the companion app, just go down here to the link where it says check for newer version, click on that, and then you can download the newest version. Let's hop over to the community folder for Microsoft Flight Simulator, as I found this is the easiest way to backtrack to the config file. If you are unsure of how to get to your community folder, I will post the address down in the lower right hand corner if you were on the PC version or store bought version, and if you are on the Steam version, I'll post your address down here on the lower left. So once you have your community folder open, all we need to do is backtrack to the local cache. So we're just gonna left click on that. And then we're gonna come all the way down to where it says user config. We're gonna left click on that to highlight it and then give it a big old right click so that we can open it with whatever application we choose. Today, we're gonna open that with the Notepad++ so if this is your first time opening the config file, it may look a little confusing to you, but that's okay because we're gonna walk through exactly what we need to do in here. So most of the settings that you're gonna find in here are actually adjustable inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. But what we wanna do is to scroll all the way down to the bottom so that we can get to the post process area for the VR settings. So what we're gonna do here is to turn all of these post processes off. Now, how we're gonna know whether something is either on or off, if it is on, it's gonna have a one next to it, and if it is off, it's gonna have a zero next to it. So now that you know that, we're gonna come through and adjust each of these so that they are turned off. We're gonna delete the one on the eye adaptation, color grading, sharpen, and fringe, and if you do have any other of these that have a one next to it, just go ahead and put a zero. Once you have finished putting a zero and turning all the post process off, then we can come up to the file section, head down to save, give that a click, and we are all set to go to open Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention, we do need to do this before you open Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you have that running, exit Microsoft Flight Simulator, make these changes, hit save, and then open the sim back up. So now that we're done here, we can exit out of that application and we are done with this folder as well, so we can get rid of that. We no longer need the OpenXR Toolkit companion app, so we can also close that out. Now what we're gonna do is launch the sim and hop into VR and I'll meet everybody back there in just a few moments. And we are back inside of Microsoft Flight Sim and also in VR mode. You must be in VR mode to activate the menu for the OpenXR Toolkit and you also must be inside a Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you try to open the OpenXR Toolkit while you're in the Steam Home or something like that, or the Mixed Reality Home, it will not open. Oh, and by the way, if you have any questions along the way while we're going through this, post those down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. Once you're in VR mode inside a Microsoft Flight Sim, to open the application, we're gonna hit the Control and F2 key on your keyboard. Inside of the OpenXR Toolkit, we have a couple different menus at the very top. From left to right, we have Performance, 
Appearance, Inputs, System, and Menu. In our previous episode, we have already gone over all these different performance options. Again, if you haven't seen that, I suggest you go over there and check that out. But for anybody that is using the HP Reverb G2, these are my settings that I'm using. So to scroll to the right, we're just gonna use the Control and F3 keys, and all of your control options are down here at the very bottom, so you can use these to be able to scroll through the different menus. So over in the Appearance menu, we have a bunch of new options here for the post-processing. And this is why we needed to turn off all of those post-processing options inside of the config file first. So to scroll down, we're just gonna use the Control and F2 key, and you wanna go down to post-processing, and yours is probably gonna be off, so you just wanna turn that on. So once you turn on the post-processing, you will now have all these other options that you can adjust. Underneath the post-processing, the first option we have here is the sunglasses. It's exactly that. If you want to put a virtual pair of sunglasses over your headset, so to speak, while you're flying, well, you can do that. So depending on how bright it is outside, you can choose a varying level of darkness to use for your sunglasses. We also have an option here called True Night, and this is really going to enhance your nighttime flying experience. If you haven't tried it, go ahead and try that out and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Underneath of the sunglasses option, we have all the other settings here for post-processing we can adjust. These are my current settings that I'm using for the HP Reverb G2. So if you'd like to go ahead and try those out, feel free. I just wanna let you know up front though, that I try to make it look as real as possible inside the headset. So the colors are not gonna be overly saturated and it's not going to be really high contrast. If you do try these settings out, let me know what you think down below in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for any of the setting changes, also let me know of that. So now that we've finished up with the appearance menu, let's hop over to the system menu. In this menu, we have a couple other options here that we can adjust. And the color gains is one of the areas that I feel needed improvement. Again, I have set this to my personal liking. If you have another setting, let me know because I'm always willing to try something new. I have had some people ask me about the field of view and whether they should do any adjustment there or not. And in my personal opinion, just leave the field of view at 100% and let it go. Below that, we also have another new option here called Zoom. I tried that out and some of you may like it, but I don't really see a need for it. That's just me. And if you know of a possible use case for this, let me know what your thoughts are. The next menu that we're gonna take a look at is the menu menu. And there are a couple changes in here. So if we take a look down here, we have an option here now that we can adjust the overlay offset either horizontally or vertically. I think that is a really cool option now, so we don't have that FPS counter right in our face anymore. You do have to turn on the FPS counter, so at the very top, make sure you go over to the performance, and then go down and turn on your FPS counter. Once the FPS counter is on, then if you come over to the menu and go down to the overlay, what's gonna show up here is the overlay position here. The FPS counter won't actually move until you exit the OpenXR menu. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So when you go down and adjust your positioning, once you finish, go down to exit, and as you can see, the FPS counter moved exactly where those parentheses were. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap us up for today's video. If you guys have any questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I will get right back to you. Thanks everybody for joining us on the channel today. If you haven't done so, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.